Hello everyone, it's Pastor Ivan. Uh, as many of you know, I'm in Taiwan right now with my family. And uh, even though it's been just a few days, we already miss everyone back at home. Uh, but one thing that we don't miss is the cold weather. So it's really, really warm here in Taiwan. Uh, so we, essentially we are escaping the, the winter weather that's in the U.S. right now. Uh, but nevertheless, I will be uh, back uh, right before Christmas time. So I look forward to seeing everyone again at the end of uh, December. But uh, before we uh, begin our uh, message for tonight, I have a few announcements to make. First of all is uh, Winter Team Conference. So Winter Team Conference is going to happen again in person at uh, Brookwoods uh, at, from February 17th to the 20th. So this will be basically the beginning of your winter break. If you don't know what a Winter Team Conference is, uh, think about our youth retreat that we had in October, but on a much bigger scale uh, because we're partnering with a lot of other Chinese churches and their youth uh, from uh, Boston, from Lowell, from uh, Worcester, Amherst, Springfield, and some other churches as well. Uh, so it's a very good opportunity to be able to fellowship with some other youth uh, and also to grow in your relationship with God too. So I highly encourage you to join Winter Team Conference. Uh, when I was a youth, I attended uh, this same conference growing up and I had a really good time. So uh, the, the registration for Winter Team Conference will begin next Friday, uh, so December the 9th. So it will be all the way until uh, January the 6th. So this is the period of time that you have to be able to uh, register uh, online. So uh, look, for, look forward to uh, sign up for Winter Team Conference. There will be some uh, emails sent out with more information. Uh, next, uh, next Friday on the 9th, we're going to have an opportunity to be able to uh, serve in the church by helping to set up the Christmas decorations. Uh, so this year, I believe uh, Jeremy's mom is going to be in charge of the, the decorations. So we're going to help her set up the decorations in the NPR, in the lunch area, and some other places uh, in, in the church as well. So that will take up the majority of our fellowship time for next uh, week. Uh, finally, uh, the, for the Friday right after that, on the 16th, uh, this is basically going to be our last youth fellowship for the, the year. And we're going to end it with uh, basically doing uh, another gift exchange. But instead of doing a Secret Santa from like the past two years, this year we're going to be doing a White Elephant gift exchange. So uh, two weeks from now, uh, I want you all to come in with a wrapped gift. So get a gift that uh, can be uh, generally for anyone. Uh, the, the limit will be uh, $20. So uh, wrap it up and then bring it in for the, uh, this gift exchange. I believe uh, Uncle Mingxiang will help lead this uh, gift exchange and explain all the rules of what, what to expect. Uh, you'll also see more information about this in an email that will be uh, sent out. So gift exchange, white elephants on uh, December the 16th, our left, last fellowship for the year. So one of the reasons why we can be able to do all these uh, fun uh, events and fellowship with one another is because many of us have started to return back to church on Sundays and on Fridays as well in, in person. Uh, and I think one of the things that we want to encourage you all to do is also to be more involved by serving one another in the church and serving God. So for today's um, message, we're going to focus on you know, what does it look like? What does it mean for us to serve one another? So if you have your Bibles, I invite you to take them out. We're going to be looking at the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, and we're just going to read two verses, uh, verses 10 to 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. All right, please follow along as I read. As each has received the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we uh, look into his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here uh, tonight for this uh, youth fellowship and uh, a great time that we have uh, playing games and uh, being with one another. But at this time, as we uh, look into your word, we pray that you will teach us. Uh, help us to know uh, the importance of serving you in the church and serving one another as, as well. Uh, I pray that you would be able to teach us and uh, give us this encouragement to, to know the benefits of serving one another and how you can be uh, glorified in, in all of that too. Father, we thank you. We lift up these things in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. So from this passage that we uh, read, we're going to be answering three main questions. So as always, you can uh, look at your handouts and fill in the blanks to take uh, notes. 
So for the first question that we're going to ask, why are we able to serve one another? Why are we able to serve one another? Then we'll move on to our second question. How should we serve one another? How should we serve one another? And finally, we'll answer our third question. What is the end goal of serving one another? What is the end goal of serving one another? So again, the, the three questions. Number one, why are we able to serve one another? Number two, how should we serve one another? And number three, what is the end goal of serving one another? So let's uh, answer the first question. Why are we able to serve one another? So I'll give you the answer right away. So by grace, God has given us abilities of service as a gift. Why are we able to serve one another? By grace, God has given us abilities of service as a gift. Let's read verse 10 with us, 1 Peter chapter 4. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. So here, Peter describes and, and tells that each and every one of us as Christians, we have a gift. And we've been given a gift by God. What is this gift? Can I open it right now? I want to know what it is. But you see, this gift, as excited as we can be when we receive gifts, uh, it's not a physical gift, but it's something that is known as a spiritual gift. Now, what is a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift, as we described, is an ability. It's an ability of service that God has given to us by His grace. So it's not a physical gift, it's a spiritual gift. In other words, an ability of service. What are some examples of spiritual gifts? So you may be given this spiritual gift or like the skill of leadership to be able to be organized, administration, to gather people to do and complete a task in the church. Or you may have the spiritual gift of evangelism to share the good news, to share the gospel with other people. Or you have the spiritual gift of teaching or preaching or ma mainly uh, service or help. You, you just like to help around with small things here and there in, in the church. You may have the spiritual gift of hospitality. Maybe there is someone who is in need, someone, a, a new visitor that you can be able to care for them and welcome them. Maybe you have the spiritual gift of uh, giving. So by giving, like maybe God has blessed you with a lot of money that, uh, and a lot of resources such as your time and energy that you can use to serve in a church. Or maybe you have the spiritual gift of encouragement. When people are feeling down, whenever they are, are going through a hard time, you have this skill, you have this talent of being able to encourage people and to point them towards God. So all these are examples of these abilities of service or spiritual gifts. And we can find like a list of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and also uh, Romans chapter 12. Uh, but this list is not an exhaustive list. There may be so many different talents, so many different skills that God may have given to you and he does so for you to serve him, to serve one another in the church. Now, as you know, like many of us like watching uh, superhero movies. And uh, as we know, like superheroes, they have many different s special abilities. So, uh, for example, like you know, Spider-Man, he can be able to shoot webs and swing across buildings. Uh, Superman has superhuman strength. Ant-Man can be able to shrink himself to the size of an ant. And uh, Batman, well... Uh, he doesn't really have any abilities, but he's really rich, and he can be able to do a lot of stuff with his, uh, with his money. So basically, all these superheroes, they have the ability to do something that not a lot of other people can be able to do. And they have the potential to use these uh, abilities to do good. So if you have a spiritual gift as a Christian, uh, although it doesn't sound as grand or as uh, amazing as having a superpower, but you have this ability, you have this skill, you have this talent that God has given you that not everyone else may be able to necessarily have. You have this potential to be able to serve God and to serve one another in the church. Let's read verse 10 again. Peter says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So here, it describes how this spiritual gift, this uh, ability of service has been given to us out of grace. So grace means that we're given something that is that's something that we don't deserve at, at all. So we don't do anything to earn this ability, this talent, the skill that we have to be able to serve. But what is given to us, we should be good stewards of it. So what does it mean to be a steward? So a steward is someone like who essentially he's like serves as a house manager. So this steward, he doesn't own any wealth of his own, but 
his master gives him some resources, gives him some wealth, and as a steward, he's supposed to manage what the master has given him to be able to help to earn more, or to gain more, or do whatever he wants according to the master's will, according to the master's uh, d- direction as well. So for us to be good stewards of what God has given to us, you know, God has given us all these uh, different abilities. He may have given you musical abilities. He may have given you abilities to be able to help out one another in the church or to be able to encourage one another. How can we use these skills, these gifts that God has given us to the best of our abilities to complete God's will according to what God wants. So in other words, we should use what God has given us in the best responsible way to serve others so that people can know God and to be able to grow in Him. So again, the first question, why are we able to serve one another? So by grace, God has given us abilities of service as a gift. So I want to ask, what are the spiritual gifts, what are the abilities of service that God has given you? I want you to think about it. What types of skills, what types of talents, what types of abilities that God has blessed you with? And then how can you use those gifts to be able to serve God and serve one another in the church? So there are many opportunities for us to be involved here in, in church. So, uh, you know, we've been uh, needing people to help us, you know, set up tables, set up chairs uh, for lunch or during Sunday school. Uh, we need people to maybe help pack like welcome gifts for new uh, youth that join us or new visitors that come to the church. We need people to help serve the lunches every single Sunday. I know you guys have been doing a, a lot of that and you've been fighting one another to, to serve the lunches. Uh, we need people to help set up the, the lunches for the, the, the children as well. We need people to be on tech team to help take care of all the, the microphones and uh, all the tech related things. Uh, we need people to uh, help out during VBS uh, to do uh, community service around based on the needs uh, to be able to give money to help serve in the church. So there are many different things that we can be able to do to serve in the church. Are you serving God? Are you using what God has given you to the best of your abilities and to the best of your knowledge to be able to serve one another in, in, in the church? And I think something I knew that we're going to be doing, I think uh, Auntie Xiaoshen and uh, Uncle Mingxiang is going to start to put together a, a volunteer uh, sign-up sheet. And uh, they'll list out some different opportunities uh, for you to be able to, to, to serve in, in, in the church. Uh, so there's smaller commitment things, but then there's also some larger commitments like uh, for student ministry teams. Uh, so worship team is one of those things where uh, it requires a longer period of a, a commitment to be on a team, to serve, and also... Like for these student ministry teams, it's also an opportunity for us to uh, be discipled, to uh, walk alongside with someone to grow in a relationship as well. So there are student ministry teams, there are uh, uh, things that we can do in church that have require a smaller uh, commitment. But, if, but my point, my question is, are you serving God? Are, do you know what spiritual gift God has given you? And are you using it to serve one another? And I pray that uh, we'll be able to figure that out and be involved as you're served in, in the church. You are an important part of our community here. So as we continue on, let's move on to our second question. So we know why we are able to serve one another, but then we want to ask how. So number two, how should we serve one another? So I'll give us uh, the answer to this one right away as well. So how should we serve one another? Number two, serve one another with dependence on God. Serve one another with dependence on God. Let's read the beginning of verse 11. Peter continues and he said, Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. So here, Peter talks about how you know, really there's two different categories of uh, serving. So those who serve by, that requires speaking, like in, in terms of like teaching or preaching or uh, helping out others out around. The, the, basically, the point is, if you are speaking while you're serving God, you should be speaking the oracles of God. Basically, you are speaking what is from God. You are speaking depending on what God is providing to you. And the other category is just service in, in general. So letters that require action. So if you serve, then it says here that you are to serve by the strength that God supplies. So you are to serve with the strength that is from God. So the whole point of these two examples is to show that that when we serve, we are to serve with dependence on God. So we depend on God to provide us with what we need to be able to serve and how to be able to serve. 
So I know for many of us, like even for me myself, like growing up, you know, we can come and make up many different excuses and many reasons for why we aren't able to serve God or serve in the church at this time. Or even like excuses for even showing up to church on Sundays or on Fridays. So we may say, oh, I don't have time to serve like, uh, I don't have this time, I don't have the energy, I don't have the, the resources like uh, right now. Uh, I, God, I don't have the money right now to be able to, to give to the church. Or uh, I'm not sure about my ability. Um, I, my, my piano playing skills isn't that great. I'm, I'm not really that strong. I can't pick up uh, uh pick up these things uh, or maybe you don't want to serve because you're so concerned so worried about what other people around you may be thinking if you are let's say up there on stage or if you are doing this or doing that so we can think of all these different excuses and different reasons for why we don't want to serve but think about it this way if God has really given you an ability to serve he's given you this resource and he also has called you to be able to use that ability use that spiritual gift to serve one another in the church then that also means that He will provide you with what you will need to be able to do it. So a personal story, when I uh, was in uh, college, I went to uh, RPI, which is basically an engineering school. So that took a lot of my time to be able to, uh, uh, to do well in my, in my studies. But at the same time, I had these opportunities to be able to serve in, in church. So I attended uh, this Chinese church and, uh, in Albany, and at that time, it was just mostly youth. So here I am as a college student, and there's a bunch of these uh, youth that are here, and they have needs. No one was really caring for it for them. Now for me, like I could go to a different church, you know, that has a lot of uh, other college students my age who I can be able to uh, learn and grow with. Uh, but you know, I felt the need, I felt the calling to be able to, you know, stay in this Chinese church where it was just uh, mostly youth and English congregation, and God has given me that burden. But one of the concerns I had was like. You know, if I spend so much time like on Fridays and on Sundays serving here in, in this church, like, you know, what about my, my studies? You know, I uh, would spend a, a lot of hours like, you know, just being away from off of campus just to, to serve. But so I was concerned. But, you know, I trusted in God that, you no, know, if he really wants me to hear, to be here and to, to serve, that he, he would give me the strength. He'll give me the wisdom and energy and what I need to be able to do what I can, but also to be able to still do well in my, in my studies. And uh, by God's grace, actually, uh, after uh, serving in church, it sort of, sort of like a break for me, returning back on campus, uh, I find that I was a lot more refreshed and I can be able to uh, study a lot more. And, you know, he, I was able to still get good grades uh, again, but that's only because of uh, God's grace. So this is just an example of, um, of a personal story of how God can be able to provide for you and take care of all your needs and all your concerns, even if you decide to prioritize and put him first as you serve one another in the church, as you trust him and use the gifts that he has given you to be able to serve. I think a lot of us, we make a lot of excuses. We have a lot of uh, reason to not want to serve or not want to, uh, uh, to be able to give of ourselves, but you know, God will provide for you. That's why it's so important for us that as we serve, that we are to depend on God. So again, the second question, how should we serve one another? Serve one another with dependence on God. So as you know, like God has given us all these uh, spiritual gifts. But in general, usually when people give us a, a gift, they give us a gift for a reason. So maybe you receive a gift because it's uh, your, your birthday or maybe it's Christmas time. Or imagine like your parents, they give you an SAT book. What is sort of the reasoning behind that? You know, they give you that gift because they want you to be able to study for the SATs. Or if your friend, uh, notices that oh your your phone case is uh, broken, uh, it's not really looking too well. They give you a new phone case because they know that you need a new one. So that's the reason. Or some some gifts may have some implications. So like if someone gives you like a stick of deodorant, then it sort of implies that maybe you need to take a, a shower or something. So the point is that there are usually reasons or purposes for why someone would give a gift. So God also has a purpose for giving us these spiritual gifts. Now, what, that, what may that be? So this brings us to our third question that we're going to answer. So number three, what is the end goal of serving one another? In other words, what is the, the, the purpose? So I'll give you uh, the answer right away. What is the end goal of serving one another? Serve one another to glorify God. Serve one another to glorify God. Let's read verse 11 again. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God, whoever serves as the one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that, so this is the reason, this is the purpose, the end goal, in order that in everything, 
God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So as we said, the end goal for us to serve one another is to praise and to glorify God. Yes, by serving one another, by using our spiritual gifts, yes, we're caring for the needs of other people, uh, we're loving one another, and we're helping one another to know uh, know and grow in the relationship with God. But as we are doing so, in the end, we are glorifying God in this way. We are praising and worshiping and glorifying Him as we sacrificially serve one another and as we depend on Him while doing so. So I think a lot of times people may have a reason for serving and sometimes we serve because we want to glorify ourselves. So someone may serve on worship team because they want to just be up there and say, hey, look how good I am at singing. Look how good I am at playing an instrument. Or look at how many chairs I can be able to, to, to carry, you know, trying to show off to other people. Or I can be able to serve here and uh, you know, I can put this on a college resume. Or I can be able to get community service hours out of it. So there may be some reasons why we may be involved and serve in different ministries at church. And sometimes it can be uh, for self-interest. Sometimes it can be used to glorify our, ourselves. But as we are serving, let's try to put that uh, aside. Are we serving in a way that we really just want to praise, worship, and to glorify God. So I think this is the question that to examine our motives as we serve. So think about how can I glorify and worship God as I use this gift, as I use this ability that God has given me to serve one another in the church. And I think God becomes pleased once he sees that, oh, we are serving lunch because we want to glorify God. We are taking care of the children during VBS because we want to glorify God. We are leading worship because we want to glorify God. Everything that we are doing in the church and outside of the church as we serve can be seen as a form of worship and can be seen as a motive of glorifying God. If God becomes our sole purpose and sole a person who we are serving and are glorifying, then that changes our outlook in life and it changes our reason to be able to serve and our motivation to serve as well. So I think this is very important for us. So let's review everything that we've learned from this passage here in 1 Peter chapter 4. We'd answer three main questions, so let's review. So question number one, why are we able to serve one another? So by God's grace, God has given us abilities to serve as a gift. Number two, how should we serve one another? And we said that we should serve one another with dependence on God. God will provide us with what we need to be able to serve and take care of any concerns that we may have. And finally, number three, what is the end goal of serving one another? And as we said, we serve one another to glorify God. So I encourage you all, let us consider what are the spiritual gifts that God has given us, these abilities of service. How can we use them to serve one another in the church? How can we depend on Him as we do so, so that we can be able to glorify God in the end? Now that you are here, now that you're attending uh, church regularly, and uh, you're here in the youth ministry, God wants you to be able to serve Him and be involved. So I encourage you to think about that as we go into our small group time and uh, consider you know, how can we be able to serve one another and see the benefits of that in, in the end. So uh, in the meantime, let, let us uh, close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you again for uh, this uh, time to be able to look into your word and to be able to grow in our relationship with you. Uh, Lord, thank you that you have shown us that you've given each and every one of us a, a gift and an ability to be able to, to, to serve. You created us with these abilities and uh, you want us to glorify you with them. Help us to see and identify what these are. And um, as we talk in our small groups, help us encourage one another and, and see what are some opportunities that we can uh, use to be able to, uh, to, to serve one another here. How can we encourage one another in in, in that? And in the next couple of weeks, as we uh, see a sign-up sheep going along uh, to volunteer to serve in different areas, uh, help us to see how we can glorify you as we uh, decide what to be able to to do. Uh, Help us to live our lives in a way that will honor and glorify you and to be what you have intended us to, to be. Father, we thank you and praise you, and we lift up these things in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen.